You might not know it, but the typical work truck or farm truck in China looks a bit different than what we're used to in the West. I wanted to learn more, so I went to China to see these interesting electric three-wheelers for myself. Hey everyone, Micah here with Electric. Today, I'm coming to you from Ruzhou, China, where I'm visiting Wuzhong to see how they make these awesome electric three-wheelers. Come along with us while we check it out. Wuzhong is one of the largest manufacturers of electric three-wheelers in China, and as I toured around the country, I saw these things everywhere, especially in the rural areas where you often pass through on the bullet trains. The way an old clapped-out F-150 is a common farm truck in the U.S., these are the go-to machines in China. I'm not talking about towing an excavator, I'm talking about a bed full of compost or corn or anything else that needs to be loaded or delivered. And Wuzhong makes hundreds of thousands of these every year, fulfilling a major portion of the millions of electric three-wheelers sold annually in China. I toured around Wuzhong's factory to get a look at how they build these common work vehicles. It all starts with the raw materials, including massive spools of sheet steel for forming the sheet metal components and a variety of steel square tubing for the frame. There's a number of different operations that are completed to cut and form these raw materials into the basic components of the chassis, including stamping, cutting, forming, and welding operations. There are some welding robots in the factory, such as this automated welding station that fabricates the critical head tubes, but much of the work is done manually by skilled welders and tradesmen. As the components move through these stages, they begin to take on a somewhat familiar form. These racks of partially completed chassis and frames next move on to the coating and painting steps, taking just days to go from bare metal inputs to a painted chassis. From there, the next step is to move on to the assembly line area. Here there were two assembly lines running in parallel on the day I visited, one for the enclosed cabin vehicles and the other for the open top machines that comprise the bulk of China's electric three-wheeler fleets. As the vehicles move down the conveyor system, workers install parts that are hoisted into place by a series of small gantry cranes. Workers continue installing all of the components along the line until at last the fully completed vehicles roll off and head for the inspection area ahead of making their way into the staging yard for eventually loading onto trucks and being delivered to hundreds of different Wuzhong dealers around the country. But before a few of those machines made their final truck run, I got to test them out myself. The team at the factory gave me a run-through of the controls, which frankly are not very complicated. If you can ride an electric bicycle, you can operate one of these machines. And then I was off, cruising the company's parking lot. I didn't head out onto the road, though you do see these vehicles all over the local roads, where they usually ride in the scooter lanes on the wide shoulders. I stuck to private property though, where I could tell the machine was plenty powerful already. These types of vehicles are rated to carry hundreds of kilos, sometimes even over a metric ton, or over 2,200 pounds. So I asked a few of the factory guys if they wouldn't mind helping me add a bit more weight, which they kindly accepted. Lucky for me, they were all good sports about it. From here, I wanted to test out one of the enclosed vehicles as well, and I was surprised to find out that once I got inside the cabin, instead of seeing a set of handlebars like the open vehicles, I was greeted with an actual steering wheel. Of course, this type of three-wheeler is going to be better for those that want protection from the rain or lockable storage, but you can even add air conditioning too, underscoring how nice the cabin addition can be. In fact, from inside of the cab, it almost felt like an actual mini truck, like a four-wheeled vehicle, especially with that steering wheel. Obviously, these are going to look somewhat foreign to Western eyes. I get it. Look, I was born in the southern United States. I grew up running through cornfields, barrel racing, and going to the fair to watch tractor pulls on Saturday nights. I know what it means to be country. And yeah, these don't look like the clapped out F-150s we're used to. But at the same time, they've got some real advantages. That bed is low, so it's easy to load and unload, especially from the sides. And the side gates mean you can actually turn the thing into a flatbed truck in just a few seconds. And that tilt bed gives you dump truck capabilities that are great for mulching, compost spreading, and other typical agricultural tasks. These are all things you can't do with a typical pickup truck. 
Oh, and to answer the question that everyone is probably wondering, no, they don't tip over. I know you think they might because three wheels sounds unstable, but the heavy batteries and the motor are mounted so low on these vehicles that when combined with that wide rear axle, they have a super stable footprint with an incredibly low center of gravity. All of the heaviest components are basically axle height, so you need to hit a hairpin turn at probably faster than these vehicles can actually go, so yeah, they're a lot more stable than they look because of that. And other than that three-wheeled thing, the rest of the vehicle has pretty much what we know and expect from work vehicles, that they have a large capacity bed and huge payload ratings. And at the end of the day, it's a truck, just a three-wheeled truck. You've got one less wheel, which means it costs less, is less complicated and thus more efficient to produce, and it means the entire thing is easier to maintain and work on. That low cost is key for farmers and laborers, and is one of the many reasons these things have taken over as the main local rural work trucks in China. And it's a market that Wujang has developed into a major powerhouse to supply, producing hundreds of thousands of these vehicles annually to fulfill a market of close to 15 million electric three-wheelers sold in China each year. Wujang is one of the largest manufacturers of electric three-wheelers in China, and in fact, they're one of the main companies behind a lot of even bigger equipment too. My visit to the company actually started at their showroom, where they showed me many of the different types of agricultural equipment they manufacture in different factories spread across their expansive complexes. They got their start in the 1960s, if you can believe it, and they built their first three-wheeler in 1984, though back then they were powered by combustion engines. The company has since switched over to electric drive for their trikes, and it makes them a lot more convenient, both due to the reduced maintenance for owners, as well as the lower cost of ownership. There's no need to buy or store diesel or gasoline, and instead operators can simply charge up on cheap electricity anywhere they can run an extension cord. There's a lot of solar in China too, meaning some operators can just go off-grid, essentially harvesting their own fuel for free. So yeah, these may look different than we're used to, but there's a reason that electric three-wheelers are so popular. They work, and they work well. Thanks for watching everyone. We hope you enjoyed that video visiting Wujang here in China to see how they make these three-wheelers. If you did like the video, we hope you give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss any of our future electric vehicle videos. We'll see you here next time.